Hey guys. So one of the questions I get asked most often is, what kinds of materials do I use to create my drawings with? So in this week's video, I thought I'd take a few minutes to go into a little detail about that for you. Everything from pencils and paper to paints and other tools. I'd also like to give you a look around my studio and show you how I'm set up, the little space that I work in. It's nothing great, it's nothing huge, but one of the reasons my wife and I bought this house was because of the great studio space that was downstairs. It's just a little room um, away from everything else, nice and quiet, so it's a, it's a good place to work. Now, I do want to caveat one thing for you. The house was built in the 60s, and when we moved in, it had never been refinished. So some of the carpet and the walls were pretty tacky. Now, we've done a lot of work down here. I've built in some cabinets and done some work on the walls, but the carpet hasn't been replaced yet. So if you see a little swatch of kind of nasty looking green indoor outdoor carpet, try not to hold it against me. So let's take a look around and then I'll show you the materials I use. Okay, so we're starting off on the west, I think, wall of the studio. Um, one thing you notice is that wall decoration is still very much a work in progress. I'm getting to it as I can, but anyway, Starting off, here's the, the built-in desk that I was sitting in front of just a minute ago. Um, this is something I built in uh, when we started refinishing the basement. Um, some unfinished cabinets that I painted and a uh, desktop that I built, stained and varnished, which I'm actually a little more proud of than I should be. But it's actually a really comfortable, really nice workspace. So <clears throat> here I've got some cosplay stuff I'm working on. Um, little Batman chest piece uh, inspiration for my Enterprise technical drawing by C. Bruce Morser, one of the great technical illustrators. I love his stuff. Here's my uh, laptop. This is where I sit to do all my graphic design work. Um, backup drives that I work off of. Little space over here to keep my drawing projects organized. Stuff I've got in progress, very easy to get to. So the south wall is another built-in uh, little bench with room to store DVDs, uh, window to our front yard, got some nice props I've collected over the years, phase pistol, phaser, cool SG-1 patches by Stitch Loft. I do actually have some decorations up on the wall here. Slowly working on it. This is where I keep all of my shipping supplies for now, although uh, the plan is to build a fulfillment center over on the other side of the basement in the laundry room uh, to get it away from all of this. But here's my drawing table, and I love this drawing table. I got this probably 15 years ago. You can kind of see that lever right there, it adjusts the height and the angle of the table. So I can pretty much put it however is comfortable. Um, it's a drafting table, a really old drafting table, but it works great. And I love it and I'll keep it as long as it stays together. So a couple more pieces up on the wall. Mjolnir and another built-in cabinet where I keep my pencils and paints and all that stuff. So coming around the corner storage closet where I keep my paper and other larger supplies. This is the door up to the upstairs residential area of our house. There's the door to the laundry room where the fulfillment area will be eventually. And here just some, we're working on slowly some more decorations, cool little things, sonic screwdriver for emergencies, Pam Beasley bobblehead, always good. And I even have my own little half bath over there, again, for emergencies. So, this is really a great space for us. And when we bought the house, um, this was one of the selling points. Just even though, obviously, the carpet needs to be replaced badly. But it was perfect for what I needed. Just a nice space to work, get away from everything else and be able to have a nice, quiet, comfortable spot to work. So that's the tour. 
Um, behind me is the area that we're basically using for storage right now. I'm not going to show you that because it's a mess, but um, what I would like to do is come over to the drawing table now and show you some of the supplies and materials that I work with um, every day. So here's a look at the supplies that I use most of the time from day to day. Um, I'll try to give you a nice variety. Um, we'll start with the paper that I use. This is one of the questions I get a lot, what kind of paper do I use? For um, technical drawings like this, my NX class uh, enterprise drawing I'm working on, which I don't do very often, but for this kind of thing and for black and white graphite portraits, um, right now I'm using uh, Canson's white drawing paper. Uh, it comes in a nice pad. Um, Strathmore also makes a nice uh, white drawing paper, but right now I'm using Canson. Um, these are the three colors of paper that I use most of the time. Th this is uh, Canson's Mitientes line of drawing papers. Um, for my Ahsoka Tano poster, um, I'm using the sand color. Um, it's kind of a nice medium brown color that I like a lot. Really easy to use um, right in the mid-tone, so you can go dark on it, you can go light on it. Same with the rest of these colors too. Um, a blue paper I use every once in a while. My Batman 66 poster I'm using a, a blue paper on uh, with indigo blue pencil for the underdrawing. <clears throat> and for more black and white centered stuff I use, um, this is a Strathmore charcoal gray paper. I don't really care for Canson's gray, The it's got a little too much pink in it for me, but I, I like uh, Strathmore's charcoal paper. It's a nice neutral gray. Um, it's got a nice tooth to it, so I can get a lot of texture with it. Uh, Mi Tientes comes in lots of different colors too. They have a green that I like a lot, um, but that's that's about it. I kind of stay in the mid-tones um, for paper, nothing too light or too dark. My pencils are all, uh, for this kind of drawing, are all Canson's Premier, or sorry, Prismacolor's Premier line uh, of colored pencils. <sighs> Very nice pencils, uh, good texture. Um, they don't smear a lot, which is nice. Um, I use a stick eraser. It's not too often, but when I need to erase, I use this. I also use a kneaded rubber eraser um, for uh, more subtle erasing to kind of, if I if something's a little too dark, I can, I can kind of blot it up, pull up a little, a little value. I sharpen my pencils with um, an X-Acto blade um, and I use pencil extenders to get the most out of the pencil. You know, you can get it down to just a little nub and still use it with the pencil extender, so those are really handy. Um, for the technical style drawings, like the Enterprise, I use Prismacolor's Vera Thin line. Um, they're harder and they stay sharper. So. Think of using like a 2H pencil compared to a 3B pencil. This stays sharp a lot longer. It gives you a lot finer line, but you don't want to use it for broad coloring. This is more of a, of a technical thin line style pencil. So that's what I use for those. Um, for finishing paints, I use Liquitex brand uh, paints. This is their gesso that I use for whites because I can water it down real nice. Um, and it, kind of builds up in layers better than paint does, um, but their their colors are also real nice. Um, I use a lot of naphthol crimson, uh, cerulean blue, cadmium yellow, um, but again these are just for highlights. I don't paint very much on the paper, uh, just for highlights and, and kind of flex at the end. Just have a couple of brushes that I use uh, for highlights. Nothing very fancy. I've had these brushes for years. Uh, this is my a steel ruler I got my first day at the Columbus College of Art and, De Art and Design back in 1994. I still use it just about every day. It's a great ruler. Um, and again, for technical style illustrations, I've got you know a cheap little compass uh, that holds one of the very thin pencils. I'll use um, French curves a lot to get a nice clean edge. And I've got various straight edges and circle templates and ellipse templates that I use. Um, this is almost all straight edge and French curve work. Um, some of it's freehand, but like all the type I'm using straight edges for to get nice clean lines. So those are my supplies. That's what I use almost every day while I work. 
Uh, they're great supplies. Um, I've been using them for years and I haven't had any reason to change. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I really like the, the materials I work with. So that's about it. Nothing special, nothing fancy, just simple supplies, a nice quiet place to work, and a lot of fun most days. I really appreciate the enthusiasm you guys give me on Instagram and at Comic Cons for the new projects I'm doing. Um, it means a lot to me um, and it keeps it exciting and fresh for me. So I really appreciate it. Um, I did want to mention where I get most of my supplies. Um, it's not an endorsement, it's just where I happen to shop and I've had a good experience with them. Uh, United Art and Education, we have a, a retail store close by, um, but especially during quarantine I ordered off their website a lot and it was fantastic. Good shipping, um, everything arrived quickly, no mistakes. It's unitednow.com I believe. Um, so you can find just about anything you need there. Wanted to mention too, all of the projects that you saw on my table today, um, I'm updating regularly on Instagram, uh, at Portraits by Alan. So you can check those out, see progress on those. They'll be available on my Etsy store as will prints uh, when they're done. So give me a follow. Give this video a like if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe, I, I do things whenever I can. Um, demos, kind of behind the scenes stuff like this. Tips on selling. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the content and I'll see you next week.